welcome to the part number 5 today we will see how to implement shortest job first that to preemptive way so we will copy our fcfs first 3 we did were non preemptive round robin was preemptive though so this is our sjf in shortest job first what we will do first is we will sort the jobs according to their size that is burst size no before that we need to sort them according to their arrival times and if their arrival times are same then we'll sort them using burst time So meaning the they will be size sorted according to their arrival times so this sorting is done then yeah now this is preemptive so we need to maintain a queue of our processes or uh, not required we can just loop over and all the processes we don't need to do that then what we will do uh, we have to go on checking the arrival times of all processes and see whether this process which is coming in currently uh, at the, that particular arrival time its size is less or not if it is less then it will preempt the currently executing process so for that we need to keep a track of the maximum uh, maximum arrival time so we will do that in this outer loop of ours we will check if our a of i is greater than max max becomes a of i and from 0 to the maximum of arrival time this is we will run a loop to keep a track of the time so for i in range 0 comma max we'll run a loop so we'll do max plus 1 because we want that time also to be included suppose it com comes in at seconds 3 we want that also to be included so in this particular loop now we'll we'll keep a track of the currently executing process first initially there is no process executing so the we'll initialize the process id as 0 and the size will be um, let's give a bigger number for size because we have to check for uh, lower sizes and then preempt it so we'll for Anywhere you check for minimums, you need to give a bigger number. Okay, now inside this, um, we'll run a loop over our entire list and check whether if arrival time of I will rename this as J if its arrival time is now that is I and its burst time that is B of J is less than currently executing processes burst time then I will preempt it so for preemption what I will do is the currently executing process I will make it to J and current size I will make it to um, burst time of J but this ith time I my process has gotten it so it will be minus 1 because 1 second is now allotted it, uh, to it if it is preempting some other process and then I will also decrement my burst okay my burst time by 1 
and then I will okay, I will queue the process in my Gantt chart queue so what I'll do is I'll queue dot now I'll check see firstly I'll check whether my C is minus 1 or not not equal to minus 1 if it is minus 1 then there was nothing executing we need not queue anything in our queue we are not preempting anything but when it is not minus 1 some other process is being preempted so at that time we'll append it so queue dot append currently executing process that is uh, let's append n of c currently executing process and for time we'll append i because i is keeping track of our time from 0 to the maximum of arrival time yes we'll do that and we'll also keep a track whether process has been preempted or not so let's initialize flag as 0 and if it has been preempted after preemption we can just break out in this if flag equal to equal to 1 that is preemption has taken taken place we need not do anything but in case it has not taken place the currently executing process will still process itself so the CS will declare a uh, we'll decrement it by one the burst time re uh, remaining and also the burst time of the process will decrement it by one and and yes first let's just print these things and then check whether it is working or not and print my Q and print my T and also I will make a dummy array okay, dummy arrays I will pass it to so let N be P1 I'll make this first okay I've made these dummy arrays to be passed to my SJS and yes let's print it till here see if what is the maximum of uh, arrival time is 3 so till 3 we should see the preemption taking place preemption operations let's see firstly at 0 p4 comes in it executes for one second and is preempted by p1 at 1 because it is its burst time is less okay it did preempt and p2 preempts p1 at arrival time 3 okay it is correct just that the numbers are a bit haywire what we'll do is we'll append i plus 1 in that case let's see whether it works p1 executes for 1 second p2 executes for 2 seconds and p3 executes for p2 executes for 2 seconds no it's not correct p1 should execute for two seconds and then p2 will preempt it so this two second thing is
a bit faulty over here we'll correct it out okay so i printed the entire log out so the thing which we are doing over here the plus one need not be required just the i we are printing and it is working correctly see p1 comes in at uh, zero then at one it is preempted and at time three p2 uh, p2 preempts p1 so that thing is working correctly just that whenever we are at the end of our loop and at that time if my process is arriving its burst time becomes zero that is one issue so i'll check over here yeah i'll employ a condition over here if my i equal to equal to max then please don't minus the burst time if it is not equal to then we can minus it okay now let's see the p2 still has been subtracted so I'll employ a condition over here as well. I not equal to max. Oh yes, P two is one, so it is working. So the process which has the arrival time at the end, it won't be subtracted. It will be kept as it is, because still it needs to execute afterwards. It has just arrived. So this is a preempting logic till all arrival times have been completed. So we are going from zero to three, and the remaining times, what we'll do, we'll after all of this, we'll sort. Okay, we'll again sort our lists based on now on their burst burst size. So we'll sort them again. We don't need a max now. We'll just sort them according to their yeah, according to their arrival times and burst size. We'll sort them again. This was supposed to be greater than. Really sorry. Yeah, because after the preemption, again, if some process was executing and its burst time has decreased now, now we need to check the least burst time of the process. So we'll sort it accordingly. And yeah, now we don't need to think about the arrival times too. That's not required. So we only sort it according to burst times now. And then. We'll append it to our array. And when do we append? If our burst time um, b of i is not equal to zero, meaning if in our preemption strategy the process has completed execution, we need not worry about it right now. Let's see our Gantt chart. I will also remove these print statements. Now let's see. Okay. P1 starts at 1, ends at 3. P2 starts at 3, ends at 4. P1 again. How much time was remaining for it? Two done, so two remaining. Okay. P3 for five and P4 for six. That is correct. Just that over here, the numbers are shifted a bit.
I'll try to correct this. Okay, what we'll do is we'll shift this inside this condition and then try printing a card chart. No, but the timings don't match. Wait. Okay, I have an idea for this. We'll clear our time and we'll only append when it is not max now let's see okay p1 till 1 p1 p1 yeah then p2 for one second okay now it is working correctly so our logic is being implemented firstly we are sorting by arrival times and if their times are same then we are sorting them using their burst time there can be an elif condition over here then we are checking the currently executing process if its burst time is greater we won't do anything but if the if the the process that's coming in that's first time whose first time is less it will preempt the currently executing process and these are some extra conditions and if not preempted we'll just subtract one time period from its burst time because it has gotten the processor for one period and after all arrival times have been scanned then we'll sort them using their burst times now because all of them have arrived right now so we'll scan according to their sizes now and then we'll append it to our queues so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching and we're done with all cpu scheduling algorithms